uh, gentlemen, uh, I still consider myself an Eisenhower Republican, but uh, you're the last I, one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But I am. <laughs> but I am still so for the health plan, any kind of a health plan, that it's not even funny. In fact, I think it's so important to the country that, uh, that I consider it treason for these people to be talking against it, where the 45 million people are uh, uninsured, and uh, it probably led to the uh, part of the uncompetitiveness of General Motors and Chrysler. Uh, don't you think you can get any kind of a health plan passed, and then if it needs to be improved, it can be done so later? Thank you. Thank you. I think the president was very clear about what his two most uh, important guideposts were, and that was reducing costs and making sure everybody has access to affordable health care. So I have expanded that to make sure that we not only cover all people, that we have portability from, so that, so that uh, folks can take their insurance from job to job to job, to make sure that we emphasize prevention, uh, physicians, not bean counters or bureaucrats making decisions of health care, and, um, uh, and this notion of pre-existing conditions. Uh, the last issue, perhaps th the most controversial one, is how do we pay for this? And what are the costs? There was an article that came out in uh, April, I believe, and it was uh, by the Associated Press. They said of the two and a half trillion dollars that we spend on health care every year, one third of that money, one third of that money, almost a trillion dollars, never reaches the doctors or patients. It's lost somewhere in the system. And while some may say, well, that's highly inefficient, it's highly inefficient, there are others who are saying, well, that's how we, we butter our bread. I mean, these are jobs. You know, Ohio has a, has, has a big um, uh, insurance presence in the state. And one of the things that Congressman Ryan was talking about was this notion of, um, of tort reform. Well, the issue is, is that we don't have a nationally regu regulated insurance industry. Uh, our, our, our insurance law ends at the state border. And, you know, it's hard to get a, a cookie cutter approach to fit each component of the, of the country. And I think that that's, that's got to be part of this discussion. Uh, of, um, and, uh, in, in, in I think as we progress, we will see that in, in, throughout this uh, debate. I, what, about, what about his question that um, can't you just get something through and work out the details later? I mean, you have colleagues in, in, your, in the Democratic caucus who have said, if there's no public option, I'm voting no. Mm -hmm. Can you, would you, as he suggested, convince them to do otherwise yeah, just I, so you have a fix that you can work on? You know, I don't think anything's ever, you know, you're saying no because you want the public option in there and you see what happens. I mean, I've seen this you know, in my seventh year now. I've seen Democrats and Republicans, no way, I'm not voting for that. That's not going to happen. You could, it'll be a cold day in hell before I vote for that. Hey, how'd you vote? I voted yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was the best deal you could get. So um, first, you know, I, it was in jest saying that, you know, an Eisenhower Republican is, is here, you know, um, and I want to hug you. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, it, and I say it, you know, to be funny, but the, the fact of the matter is you would not fit in in Washington, D.C. as a Republican because we don't have, we don't have Ralph Regulars anymore. The, the, you know, the, the last of the moderates have left. David Hobson, Ralph Regula, Ray LaHood became secretary of, uh, those, those were moderates who said, you know what, we got to watch spending, but we need to invest in our roads, we need to make public investments in health care, but we don't want to overburden business and tax them too much. You know, there was a balance in there, but that is not there. What you're seeing now is people saying this needs to be Barack Obama's Waterloo. That is not, that, that makes it very difficult to pass something that has bipartisan support. And then the other argument is, well, the, here come the Democrats are going to ram something down our throats. I think we are going to pass something. But my concern is, what if we don't have a public option? What if we say everyone's going to be covered and we're going to put a surcharge on millionaires and pay for these credits so people can have some, some, uh, some subsidies to afford it? And so now we have another 50 million people that we're subsidizing to go into the health care to, to go to the private insurance market, and we don't do anything about costs. It, I mean, talk about wanting to buy stock in insurance companies. My God, they're going to have another 50 million people coming in with no cost controls. That, to me, is, a, is I hate to say it, but it may be worse than, than doing nothing. The, the, the concern with doing nothing, though, is we can probably get something passed on pre-existing condition. We can probably get something passed on, uh, on quality of care. 
Um, you know, we need to do something about having standards, best practices among docs so that we can start dealing with the liability issue where both sides can maybe agree on that. But I think we will get something done. But I am very pessimistic that there will be one Republican who will go along with it. You know? Okay. Let's take our next question. Gentlemen, great to have you here today. Actually, I really have five questions, but you said make it short. <laughs> uh, you said you're going to cover all Americans, but Congress is not covering itself. How hard will you fight to co cover Congress? You said uh, the health care costs are going up, but how hard are you going to fight for tort reform? And what about, you know, government's gotten into health care, and that is part of the problem for increasing costs. Then this idea of pushing things so quickly. There are unintended, unintended consequences. How are you going to be sure that we're still leading the world with new medicines, new technical procedures? OK, those are three. <laughs> the last one, I count four, but that's all. Can I get tickets for uh, Jimmy's return party? Oh, that's over with. <laughs> OK, all right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. John Bacheri. Well, I, I, I would agree with the notion that having it all doesn't mean having it all right now, in terms of maybe the proposals that we've outlined um, uh, we've got to find consensus on this. And as I said, I hope and pray that we'll be able to bring some Republicans along the board. Uh, you know, there are things in the bill that I, 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 I have concerns with, too. I, there are things I like and things I dislike. But at the end of the day, we've got to find a way that we can all come together as a country. And this is not a challenge that should be reflective of party line. I think too often we think about things in terms of the next election. Well, what's this going to do for me in 2010? What's this going to do? Instead of thinking about the long-term competitiveness of our nation, uh, because costs are unsustainable. That's, that's universal agreement from folks who are in the medical profession to folks who are outside of it are suggesting that this is unsustainable, the track we're on. Well, how much of the timing has to do with, uh, with getting this done before you all have to start campaigning for re-election? Oh, that has nothing to do with it. No. <laughs> you know, I, I think in part, you know. Don't start it next uh, year. I uh, start right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, in part, you know, there's always politics that, that come into play. And, and, and we saw it, you know, um, why you need to get something done and have some time to discuss it with your constituents before an election because we've just spent a month and a half or two months talking about death panels and covering illegal uh, aliens. And it's not, in, not, it's not even in the bill. In fact, there's stuff in the bill that says complete otherwise. So you know, you need some time before you go back to your constituents for, um, for re-election to, to talk about it. And I think that's a, that's a reality of our system. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to say it. And again, there are people who, you know, I, we get calls every single day, and you know people every single day that have to deal with fighting their insurance company. People are tired of that. They want something done, and they want it done now. And why are you jamming it down our throat? We've been trying to do this since Franklin Roosevelt was president. I mean, there have been, I think, 60 or 70 committee hearings in, uh, uh, in, the, in the House in different forms about this, this topic. And you're going up against, right now, a party with that President uh, Bush was the head of um, that vetoed the children's health bill that co only covered 10 million kids. He vetoed that. So how are we going to have a discussion about covering everybody? We couldn't even get agreement. Uh, we couldn't even override a presidential veto on getting health care to 10 million kids. That's the kind of polarization that we have. And just to answer, I think it was your first or second question, um, on, on you know, I have s said that if there is a public option, I will drop my federal employee coverage and I will go into the public option. I am that confident that it is going to be successful and it's needed. I will get into it. 